Hello, welcome to another Snap Reports class. My name is Celia Alves and I teach you ways of automating your work in Excel. By automating one task, we free up space in our minds that we can dedicate to other more important matters, either for our companies or our personal life. Even if one task seems small, if it is something that we need to repeat frequently, it is worth the effort of finding a way of teaching Excel how to take care of that task for us. However, the problem sometimes is that we don't even know how to do it manually either. So the first step to automate one task is to find out how to do it manually. Not everything requires programming. It may happen that Excel already has a built-in functionality that can take care of what we want to do. We just need to know where to find and use that functionality. In today's class, we will see how to sort data in Excel to follow any sorting rule that we want. The exercise files, in case you want to follow along, are available in my Telegram channel and the link is either in the video description below or in my bio if you are watching from Instagram. Thank you in advance for any feedback you may provide. I always look forward for your comments and your suggestions. So this question was posted on Microsoft's tech community. It is a question by Said Shaeri and he says, I have a shared Excel based database with some colleagues. One of the database attributes is the type of schedule, which can be one of the A uppercase, A lowercase, A C uppercase, C lowercase, and so forth, etc. When I attempt to sort or filter the database based on schedule, the small and capital letters, this is uppercase and lowercase, are treated the same and would not be sorted correctly. I changed the database to an Excel official table, but that was not a successful move either. I am seeking opinions on correctly sorting and filtering the database without adding any extra column. An extracted section of database is attached. Okay, so this is the example, uh, the sample data that was provided. We can see the schedule column here with different letters mixed and we want to sort them in that way. Let's remember the rules that we need to address. So we want to sort schedule alphabetically, but having uppercase and lowercase distinguished. For each letter, we want uppercase first and then lowercase and then the next letter of the alphabet. So we need a sorting that is case sensitive. Also, we want to avoid adding any extra columns. My first thought was to use Power Query because I just remembered right away that Power Query is case sensitive. If we use Power Query and we sort this set of data here, this is how Power Query does it. It first puts all the uppercase letters and then all the lowercase letters. So not good for what we need. And even if it was, if the user does not want to add an extra column, uh, the reason for that he explained later is that that he's sharing the file with other people, so he wants to keep it as simple as possible, probably Power Query would not be a welcome solution. One of the built-in functions that we have is the custom sort. So if we come to the tab Home, then Sort and Filter, Custom Sort, we have this window here with different options available. So we want Schedule, and we want to sort on cell values. If we click here, we can see that we have other interesting options. Uh, we can sort by cell color, font color, conditional formatting icon, which is, can be very interesting for other situations. And if we choose to sort A to Z, let's see what happens. We get A's and then B's, but as mentioned by the user, it's not case sensitive. So uppercase and lowercase A's, for example, are all treated the same. Okay, so that's not what we want. So let's try again. Home, custom filter and custom sort. We have a button here that says options. And in here we have case sensitive. So let's see what happens if we activate that option. Okay, all right, so we have all the A's, lowercase first, and then A's, uppercase after. It's almost what we need, but just the other way around. So we wanted to have 
uppercase A's first and then lowercase. Other than that, it's quite nice, but that's not exactly what we need. So let's see how we can solve this. Let's explore custom sort again. Home, sort and filter, custom sort. So we want to sort schedule column on cell values and A to Z. Yes, but it's not doing what we want. Z to A, we don't want that. This brings us here to a set of lists that are already available, but none of these are what we want. These, in fact, for example, when you are using a pivot table, creating a pivot table, and we have the ability to sort by the different months or even when we are sorting our data in our tables and it sorts correctly by months is because these lists are available here. And we have the option of creating a new list. So if we do this, we can start typing the entries here. By the question, I was not sure if we need all the alphabet letters. I'm going to create all the alphabet letters, put them all in the list, both uppercase and lowercase, just in case. And I don't want to be typing them here. I could type them here and go and create all the alphabet. But you already see that I'm making a, mis a mistake here. It's difficult. So I'll stop this here, I'll create the custom list in a range and then I'll show you how you, you can import the list into here. So let's do cancel. Let's add another sheet here. Before we create our list, I would like to tell you about the HC codes. This is a way of numbering different characters. So HC stands for American Standard Code for Information Interchange. And this is a code that allows us to identify each one of the different characters that we can use when using a computer. The first few characters from code 0 to code 31, so 32 characters, are non-printable characters. Then from code 32 to 127, these start with the space character and then some symbols, digit characters, and then other symbols, and finally on code 65, we have letter uppercase A. And then B, C, D, and so forth until Z. Then we have a few symbols again. And then on code 97, we start with the lowercase a, lowercase b, and so forth. Let's use this information. There are two Excel functions that we can think of to work with this situation. So if I type a uppercase and a lowercase, there's the code function. And if I point to that cell, I see that this is code 65. And again, if I apply the same formula, now to this cell with lowercase a, I see that the code is 97. The other function is the inverse function of this one. It's the one that transforms a number into a character. It's the char function. If we point to this value, we get a. And similarly, if we point to 97, so character 97 is a lowercase. Let's find a way of organizing our characters to create our list. I'm going to put here code, character, and then I'm going to put a custom code because I want to create a different coding system that allow me to sort the alphabet letters, putting uppercase and lowercase just one after the other, and then the next letter and so forth, just the way we need it to be in this situation. In here, we need to start with code 65. We have up to 256 code numbers. Just putting the first few ones here and then right click in this corner here and then drag down with pressing your right button in your mouse. Let's go down up to 256. Okay, and then series, step value one and linear type. Okay, so here we have all the codes we need. Here, let's apply the function char. The number for our code is in this column. Let's drag this down. We will need up to code 122. 
Now I want to find a way of creating a different code. If I had uppercase A code 65 and then lowercase A 65.5 and then uppercase B 66, uh, lowercase B 66.5, I could use those numbers to then sort the way I need. So let's do a calculation here. The difference between this code and this one is 32 units. So I can do the following. If this code is lower than 97, then give me this code. Otherwise, if I go beyond 97, when the lowercase letters start, then I want the code for that letter minus 32. Let me lock this cell here or I could just type minus 32 plus 0 0.5, okay? So we have 65, 60, 66, 67, and so on. And then from here we start 65.5. Okay, so this is looking good. So now if I apply the filters here and use the filter buttons to sort smallest to largest in the custom code column, now I get my letters the way I need them to be to use in my list. Okay, so let's now see where we can add a custom list. We can go to File, Options, Advanced, and then scroll down almost until the end, until we find the general section here and edit custom lists. Here we have the first option that says new list. Let's click there. It brings us to this window, but now accessing the custom list from here, we have an extra field that we didn't have before that is to import from list from cells. So we could come here and select the cells that have the characters that we need and say import. Unfortunately, it says cells without simple text were ignored. And this happens because we have formulas in those cells. So let's cancel. And let's just select the entire range. And control C, paste as values. And now we don't have the formulas here anymore. So let's go back, File, Options, Advanced, scroll down to General, Edit Custom Lists, New List, select here, click here to import your range. Let's go down up to here. This is our range with the elements we need for our list. Click Import and there we go. And now we can say OK. And from here, OK again. So now we have that custom list available for us that we can use in tables or even in pivot tables. And this functionality has been available since Excel 2007. So if we go back to our data and click anywhere in the table, again, go to tab Home, Sort and Filter, Custom Sort, and let's check everything. And we want to sort by column schedule. If there were other criteria, for example, if I wanted to sort by schedule and then inside a certain schedule letter, I wanted to have the item number sorted in an ascending order, for example, I could add other levels to my sorting, but we don't need that. So sort on cell values, sort A to Z, no, let's sort by a custom list. And now we have our list here, we select the list and say OK. And now OK again, 
And there we go. We have all the uppercase A's, then upper lowercase A's, uppercase B's, lowercase B's, and so on and so on, exactly the way we need it to be. So now let's just test this. Let's come to the end of our table. Let's put 100 here. I don't need to fill in all the uh, fields. We just are interested in seeing if this works. So let's put here just to identify that this is test one and let's say a lowercase, okay? To use the sorting rule that we just created, we don't need to go all the steps again. We can come to sort and filter, and then instead of going to custom sort, we have the reapply function here, reapply. And let's see if our test is in the proper place. So test one, is in the section with lowercase a's, just right after uppercase a's. So this is working correctly. So as far as automation goes, I'm quite happy with the result. I don't think this requires recording a macro or anything like that. I think it's easy enough to teach users how to use the built-in functionality that already exists in Excel. If you want to still create a macro, please feel free to do so. You can hit the recording button and start recording a macro and then adjust the code to your needs. Just one final suggestion, maybe if this is something that the user is going to be doing a lot of times throughout the day, uh, then we can consider coming to home sort and filter, and then this function here, reapply, we can right click on it and add to quick access toolbar. So this way, if the user is in any other tab in Excel and adds a new item, let's do another test. Let's do 200 here and then here test two. And let's put this as a uppercase B then the next thing to do is to come to here uh, into our quick access toolbar. Just click the button that we added just now re for reapply. And right there, we will have our new entry in the correct place using the sorting rule that we want. So just one final comment, because Saeed mentioned that the file was shared between different users. On my testing, it didn't seem that we needed to create the list in different machines. I opened this file from another machine using the shared folder and the list was available there. On a quick search I did, I could not really be sure if there will be the need of recreating the list in other people's computers. And so this is my example for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Remember that Excel has a never ending set of built in features. Each one of us ends up learning different features depending on the work that we need to do in Excel. Automation in Excel is not necessarily about VBA macros, Power Query, complicated formulas. It can be, but it does not need to be in some cases like the one we saw today. It can be just about using the resources available in Excel to make life easier for us and of those using the files we create. If you are interested in learning more about how we can automate our tasks in Excel, remember to subscribe this channel and activate the notifications so that you do not miss my next tutorials. Remember again, the files, the exercise files are available in my Telegram channel. Remember too to leave your testimonial about what you learned today in this video, leave it in the comments and send the link of this video to someone who you think might take advantage of this tutorial. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video. Bye now.